Everyone is familiar with the most infamous of all aircraft disappearances. Tragically, with all our more modern technology, the disappearance of an entire aircraft isn't unheard of. As painfully illustrated by the recent disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, there are many more aircraft whose disappearance is surrounded by tragedy and mystery, though, and some date back to the earliest days of flight. Financed by organizations like the Daily Telegraph and the New York Times, the America was the airship that made the world's first attempt at crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Little more than a cotton and silk balloon, the airship had a crew of seven, six humans, and a cat named Kiddo, who was brought along for good luck. There were airship-related problems, including difficulty in maintaining a consistent height, with the ship wavering at times between 200 and 3,600 feet. Winds proved more than a challenge, and to make matters even worse, a hurricane was brewing to the south. Originally heading in the right direction, the airship was eventually blown back to the west, by insurmountable winds, after 72 hours they radioed the Royal Mail ship, the Trent, and requested assistance. The America's entire crew, including Kiddo, made it into the lifeboat, when they were picked up by the Trent. The mail ship took them on to New York, where they were treated to a hero's welcome in spite of their failure. The America itself was never seen again, though, and the last glimpses of it were of the airship rising, and heading out farther over the ocean. Glenn Miller, was one of the premier big band performers of the 1940s. Miller already had a staggeringly successful career, when he decided to enlist in the army in 1941, determined to do his duty for his country. Miller was heading from England to France, he left as a passenger on an Osman C-64 plane, and was never heard from again. There's been a number of theories about just what happened to Miller's plane, but nothing has ever been proven. According to one recent theory, poor visibility forced the pilot to fly low across the English Channel, engines froze, and it was only a matter of seconds before the plane hit the water. Other theories suggest that the plane was hit by friendly fire that happened when bombers couldn't complete a run and needed to jettison their bombs over water before landing and Miller's plane was in the way. Another theory says that Miller and his plane were taken away by aliens. 70 years of searching military history hasn't led to any more concrete information about what happened to Miller or his plane. Frederick Valentich was a 20-year-old member of the Air Training Corps. He disappeared over the water between Australia and Tasmania. He would disappear in a rented single-engine Cessna, picked up from the Moorabbin Airport in Melbourne, and hired for only a quick three-and-a-half-hour flight. In October of 1978, he rented the plane to make his trip. Radio communications with Valentich were troubling, regardless of what you believe. The young pilot reported seeing another craft in the distance, four lights that seemed to be standing still. As communication goes on, he continues that the aircraft passed over him, and eventually began hovering above him. He described it as metallic looking, with green lights, which believers in alien intelligence and UFOs say, is very clearly an encounter with an extraterrestrial. Valentich reported engine trouble shortly after, and then disappeared. His last transmission, though, has given people plenty of opportunity to suggest that, he was actually abducted by aliens. Supporters of this theory include his father. There's a handful of things that are weird about his disappearance, aside from his report of the strange craft. He originally gave two different reasons for his trip out to King Island, saying first that he was picking up some passengers, and then that he was picking up some crayfish, neither of which were on the island waiting for him. Because the landing strip he was heading to was unmanned most of the time, he would have had to call ahead to make sure someone was there to guide him in, which he never did. Another of the non-traditional aircraft on this list, the light heart was Thomas Lee Gatch Jr.'s claim to fame. Gatch was attempting to be the first to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a balloon. Not your traditional balloon, the light heart was of $60,000, and consisted of 10 super-pressure helium balloons, that had been specially designed to travel in the jet stream, across the Atlantic. Gatch's original plan was to ascend to 40,000 feet, enter the jet stream, and coast his way to Europe. 
Although one of the balloons burst not long after his takeoff on February 18, 1974, he had designed the craft to be able to still function with the loss of two balloons, and he continued with the remaining nine. The journey was supposed to take somewhere around 52 hours from departure at Harrisburg Airport in Pennsylvania to Europe. The last radio contact anyone had with Catch was on the afternoon of February 19, when he was determined to be about 925 miles northeast of San Juan. The light heart was seen several days later by a Liberian freighter, and it was already flying much much lower than expected, and was even farther off course. This was the last sighting of the balloon, and although there was a massive search undertaken by the United States military ships and planes as well as civilian craft that were in the area, no other trace of the light heart or its pilot was ever seen again. Flight 19 is one of the most legendary of all aircraft disappearances, and one that gave credence to the mythology of the Bermuda Triangle. While none of the five missing planes have ever been found, on December 5, 1945, five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers, headed out from the United States Naval Air Station, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on a training mission. Among the pilots was a senior qualified flight instructor, with other pilots, all having logged time in that type of aircraft. Weather was average, with no more than scattered showers and mild winds, nothing that would have caused catastrophic problems. By 4 p.m., a radio message between pilots was intercepted, it indicated the flight instructor was unsure of where they were and which direction the coast was in. It was assumed that they had made their way farther to the southeast than they should have been, but no cause for the misdirection was ever indicated in any other transmissions. The aircraft, which only had enough fuel to last them until 8 p.m., would have been forced down over the ocean. While there were no records of storms in the area, no traces of the flight were ever found, even though there were other aircraft and ships sent to search for the missing group. One of the rescue planes, a patrol plane that left Fort Lauderdale at 7.30 p.m. on December 5th, also went missing. In spite of efforts from the Army, Navy and Coast Guard, no trace of either Flight 19 or of the missing rescue craft was ever found. For more such videos, please subscribe to our channel. Go, 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 go.